Today I'll teach you how to use CSS Flexbox in less than 10 minutes. So if you're new to CSS Flexbox or just want to enhance your understanding of it, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jay from Coding with Jaybird and here on my channel you'll learn coding tips and tricks that'll help build your confidence in coding. All right, let's get started with our code today, shall we? As the name suggests, Flexbox is flexible and it allows the container to take its inner flex items and stretch them or shrink them based on the available space. Let's start by looking at the properties that we can apply to the flex container or the parent container itself. To start using Flexbox, we need a container such as this in our HTML that's going to wrap its inside items or its flex items. So these flex items are the children and then the outer container is called the parent container or the flex container. Now moving on to our CSS, in order to make this container flexible, we must target this container and give it a property of display with the value of flex. And we'll see that the items that were once vertically stacked are now horizontally stacked. And that's because Flexbox creates an imaginary main axis that goes horizontally from left to right, and it places all of our inside flex items along that main axis. It also creates a vertical axis or a cross axis that goes from the top to the bottom. Flex direction by default is set to row, and this is what sets our main axis to be horizontal from left to right. We can also alter the direction of this main axis from horizontal to vertical by changing the flex direction property to a value of column. And now our imaginary main axis runs vertically from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, and it's cross axis from the left of the page to the right of the page horizontally. We can reverse the direction of the main axis by using column-reverse, which changes the main axis from the bottom to the top now. And similarly, row-reverse will change the main axis from the right to the left. We can align our items along the main axis using the Justify Content property. By default, this property is set to Flex Start. As you can see, nothing changes. Flex End places the items at the end. Flex Center centers our items. Space between will evenly distribute the flex items. However, we won't have any space between the first and the last item and the container walls. Space around is very similar to space between and it evenly distributes the space between our flex items. However, this time we have some allowable space on either side of our first and our last flex item. Now, if we want an exact even amount of space around all of our flex items, we would use the value of space evenly. And now we have an exact same amount of space between each one of our flex items and the container walls. Align items aligns our flex items along the cross axis. By default, it's set to flex start. Flex end will move our flex items to the end of the cross axis. We can also use baseline. The baseline value aligns the baseline of our flex item text. Now we're not gonna see anything happening here because all of our flex items have the same text size. So let's select our third flex item and give this a font size of let's say 25 pixels. And now we'll see that the baseline of all of our flex items has been aligned. Both justify content and align items also work in the flex direction of column. Now we've set the flex direction to column where the main axis goes from the top to the bottom and the cross axis goes horizontally from the left to the right. Now we can space evenly justify our content and you can see it's evenly spaced out our content along the main axis, which is now vertical. Applying the center value to our align items property, we're now taking our flex items and aligning them to the center of the cross axis, which is horizontal in this case. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on CSS Flexbox. Let's reset our flex direction back to row. Now everything looks good here because we only have five items, but what if we had five more items? So let's duplicate our items here in our HTML. Now we can see our flex items are all squished together. By default, flex items all try to fit into one line. So when I added these extra five items, they all got squished together, still staying on the same line. We can fix this problem by using the flex wrap property. By default, the flex wrap is set to the value of no wrap. We can change this value to wrap. And now our flex items are wrapping onto the next line. When we set our flex wrap to the value of wrap, we unlock a new property called align content. Align content allows us to align our content along the cross axis. We can use flex end, flex start, 
Center will align our content along the center of the cross axis. We can use space between, space around, and space evenly. We can condense our flex direction and our flex wrap into one CSS property called flex flow. Now this takes two values. The first value will be the flex direction. So I can change this to column and from flex wrap, I can change this to no wrap. And now we've overridden our flex wrap, which is a value of wrap and our flex direction, which had a value of row. The gap property allows us to control the space between our flex items. So let's give the gap a value of 20 pixels. And now we have space between all of our flex items, but not the items themselves and the container. So far we've looked at the properties that we can apply to the flex container or the parent. Let's move on and have a look at the flex items and what properties we can apply to these flex items themselves. To better demonstrate that, I'd like to go back to having only five items in our HTML code. And for our CSS, I'd like to have the basic flex styling of display flex and flex direction row. By default, our flex items are laid out in the order of our source code, but we can change that with the order property. Giving our second flex item an order value of one changes the order of which our flex items are displayed in the flex container. And now we can see child two shows up last. By giving a higher order value, let's say two, to our third flex item, now we can see that our third flex item is the one that shows up last. Flex grow allows a flex item to grow if necessary. It takes a unitless value and acts like a proportion. This determines the amount of space an available item should take up in the container. By setting the child force flex grow value to one, child item number four is now taking up any available space that's left over in the flex container. By applying a higher flex scroll value of two to our fifth flex item, we can see that item number five is now growing more proportionately than item number four. Flex shrink determines how a particular flex item will shrink compared to the remaining flex items in the flex container. As I reduce the browser width, we'll see that flex item one is going to shrink faster than the remaining flex items. The flex basis property sets the default amount of space that a particular flex item will take up before the remaining space is evenly distributed. Here we can use a pixel value, a percentage, or even auto. This makes sure that we override child one's original width and set it to 200 pixels. The property flex can be used as a shorthand for flex grow, flex shrink, or flex basis. The second and third values are optional. By setting the flex value to one, our flex grow is set to one and our flex shrink and flex basis are set intelligently by Flexbox. To better understand the last property, let's ensure that we set our align items property back to flex start, which is the default value. The align self property, which can be applied to a particular flex item, allows us to override the align items value that we've set on the parent container. I can now change the alignment for our third flex item by giving the align self a value of center. I can also apply flex end or baseline. That's really all there is to Flexbox. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Until next time, keep on coding.